And guys, without further ado, my number one Harry Potter book chapter artwork is... Hey guys, and welcome to the Mr. Wells channel, where today we will be ranking the American edition Harry Potter books one through seven. This is my official ranking of these books, of the chapter art, or excuse me, of the book art. So, uh, to each its own, whatever you guys feel like is, is your most important, let me, uh, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. Obviously, rankings and Harry Potter it can go a, a number of amount of ways. This is just my personal ranking, so let's get started. Okay, so, as you guys are aware, I am from America, so these will be my uh, American edition book uh, rankings. I, since I am American, yes, I will be saying Sorcerer's Stone. Sorry to offend anybody and to potentially lose any subscribers that way, but that's just what I've grown up to know it as, so if that offends you, uh, I apologize. We can have a discussion about it in the comment section. I had initially thought about doing this in the uh, the tier ranking list that you see on mine, but that kind of doesn't, in my opinion, at least for this ranking style, doesn't give a numerical value. It just gives like an overall feel good, doesn't feel good uh, ranking, which I like all of these books and I like all the book art cover for the most part. Each are unique and different in their own way. And I just want to go ahead and be, uh, you know, be committed to ranking, you know, seven through one, starting from seven. So without further ado, I'm going to present my seventh Harry Potter book cover ranking. Order of Phoenix. Uh, obviously the biggest book in the series. Uh, surprisingly, you know, this is my least favorite chapter, or see, I keep saying chapter. This is my least favorite book cover art. Considering my favorite color is blue, you'd think I would have it, you know, at the top. But honestly, <clears throat> as great as it looks, and I do like the uh, the swirling candles, this is clearly Harry and company, you know, in the Department of Mysteries in the circulating room because there's a bunch of doors and blue candles around. I just think that the overall artwork of it is just too simple in a way. It's just there's not really a lot of, you know, it doesn't really pop out. It's a really dull blue type color. Um, I like the writing of the smoke where it says Order of Phoenix. I don't really care about the back of the book because it's an entirely different scene. It's, I believe, when the, the advance guard comes and picks up Harry from, um, from Privet Drive. And it's just not that exciting to me. Um, again, I have nothing against the, all of these books, all these book covers. Uh, the, the artist, Marie Grand Prix, did an outstanding job on all of them. This one just happens to be my least favorite one. So moving on to my sixth favorite Harry Potter book art would be Deathly Hallows. I don't really know what to say about this cover. It's, it's great. I mean, this is literally, spoiler alert, the climax of not only this book, but the entire series. This is where, or right after where Harry and Voldemort, uh, you know, connect up real quick and Elder Wand comes shooting out. That's what Harry is actually reaching for in that moment. Um, I do like how we get to see Voldemort. Um, you know, he's inside the, uh, the cover right there, but that's one of the only times we really get to like see him. Uh, there's a couple of different, you know, chapter art uh, work, you know, in between each chapter where you, you get little snippets of Voldemort, but nothing quite that up close or that, that quite large. So I do appreciate the book for that. But again, this, this it kind of spoils, you know, if you're a kid and you're reading this, you're anticipating this scene because it looks like it's, you know, cut out of the story. So it's kind of when you get to Harry in the forest again, and you have this, this image of, of this, kind of triumphant pose with the sun rising behind Harry, Voldemort and Harry, you know, shooting off to each other. It's, it's, it kind of spoils it in a way. So I, I wonder what the thinking was there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I get the other side of it where it's like, this is the moment. So we want to put this on the, uh, on the cover. But again, at the time, I, I, I definitely recall, you know, reading this for the first time in 2007 with Harry walking into the woods and being like, well, I'm feeling, you know, emotional that he's, you know, seeing his parents again and is about to die, but I wasn't convinced because of the book cover. So that's why it is uh, 
low on my list. Moving on to my sixth favorite Harry Potter book cover would be Goblet of Fire. Um, I think it's a pretty good, you know, book cover. It's, there's a lot happening in it. It, um, I, <clears throat> again, I like how uh, books one through four kind of have like a splash pad of, of things going on and, and whatnot. So this one is really more like a kind of cop because nothing in, in <clears throat> nothing on this cover is like a scene from the book. It's just kind of like, oh, there's Harry holding the egg, but there's the dragon, there's, you know, Crom, there's Cedric, there's all kinds of creatures around it. So it's just like a, a splash pad of, you know, snippets and scenes. So I do appreciate that for being what it is. It's honestly kind of looking, it's the only one that kind of, you know, copies and pastes and cuts from other, you know, scenes from the book and, and just kind of just froze it onto the cover. So I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm honestly, I, I think right before I made this ranking, I, I think I had it a little bit lower until I remembered the, uh, the spoiler that was Deathly Hollows of the book cover. So I think that took Deathly Hollows down a peg and, and bolstered this one back up. But overall, you know, it's solid. I, I like the visual, um, you know, detail that it gives Cedric and Crumb and Fleur. Uh, until the movies came out, this is exactly how I pictured, you know, all these people. I think you know, Crumb looks so different um, in the movies versus the books. But yeah, I, I do appreciate at least, you know, all the different creatures on it. And you know, there's just a goblet just randomly sticking out of the maze. Uh, the Bobaton carriage, some kind of, what is that? Is that like a termite? Is that the blast into the screw? Is that what that is? I've never noticed that before. It looks like a giant termite, something from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or something. <laughs> and moving on to my fourth favorite Harry Potter book cover it would be Chamber of Secrets. Uh, this one, obviously a sequel to Sorcerer's Stone, kind of takes a direct snapshot out of them escaping out of the uh, the chamber. Uh, actually, let's just roll clip right now. Boom. Amazing! This is just like magic! Love me some Gilroy Lockhart, am I right? <clears throat> but yeah, this is a, it's a pretty cool scene. I like how it kind of has all of them. Oh, the sword. Yeah, the sword of Gryffindor completely different than how the movie does it and how, well, yeah, I guess the end of this, the uh, Dobby's reward shows the same sword. Let me double check real quick. Well, that's weird. I could have never noticed that. Okay, so that's interesting. See the sword on Harry's uh, belt loop? That's the sword of Gryffindor. <clears throat> looks a little different a little different than the one Dumbledore's holding in the uh, last chapter it doesn't have never noticed this before yeah it doesn't have the uh, the uh, what you call it the the knuckle cover I'm sure there's a fancy word for all you swordsmiths out there don't at me and it doesn't have any ruby encrusted so maybe this was just one version of the sword Wow I'm just gonna spend all this time talking about the sword now um, regardless, it's it's still an interesting. <laughs> I can't get over the sword. Wow, it's, have any of y'all ever noticed that that the swords are different? I'm kind of like mind blown right now, honestly. Um, <clears throat> moving back to the uh, to the overall cover, I, I do like what's going on. I like how Fox's wing takes up, you know, like a, a fourth of the cover. That deep, deep majestic red that's got going on. The creepy snakes in the background, uh, the written in blood, you know, that's a really cool, nice little touch, you know, call back to um, when Jenny was writing on the wall in blood. Uh, there's Jenny and Ron <clears throat> in the background. Man, they don't have Gilderoy on here, do they? No. So unlucky I wasn't there. Because, yeah, Jenny's hand goes out of sight. Uh, and then randomly, I guess that's Mrs. Norris. Is, is it? It's just kind of like scared and petrified looking. It has to be Mrs. Norris, right? Yeah. And now time for my third favorite Harry Potter book cover. <clears throat> it is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Starting off, I love the green. I know earlier I said that five, six, seven 
went on to this tonal, you know, shift where it's just, we're gonna just do primary, you know, just colors and let that be that. I love the green and I love the purple. It's really a color combo that you wouldn't even think is a thing, but it really works really well. And one of the best things I like, I love how the Half-Blood Prince is written, I'm assuming in Snape's handwriting, which is described as like cramped and, you know, slanted or cramped and small, uh, but it just has a really nice personal touch to it. Um, <clears throat> this, you know, is, is a, screenshot of them in the cave uh, trying to figure out how to get the horcrux or what we assume to be the horcrux out of the uh, the shallow bowl. Um, very terrifying scene and so even in the book it's it's really described that that environment that location as a emerald green aura so uh, for, for the artist to, to incorporate that into the book cover, I thought was a great, you know, addition or a great idea. I love, you know, Dumbledore's look. I think we only get, you know, a look at Dumbledore other than in a couple of chapter arts. We only get him on like the back or the front or the back of Sorcerer's Stone. It's kind of like holding his cloak or whatnot. So that's a really good depiction of Dumbledore. I also love, I, I remember, you know, back in, when did this come out? 2005? Well, this came out and they showed this as the back cover of a dark mark over Hogwarts. That, you know, that alone, and that could have been the cover. And, you know, that's just a scary notion or a scary thought and intriguing and, and uh, terrifying. So I remember being, you know, I guess in a way terrified and just held in suspense throughout my entire first reading of this book because of that, the, the back cover work of seeing the dark mark, you know, in the sky like that. It had me really engaged and really, you know, kind of focused in on the story. So yeah, that is my number three uh, book art ranking. And we're down to just two more books left. So we have Prisoner of Azkaban and Sorcerer's Stone. And drum roll, please, for the number two. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Obviously, you know, this is the one that started it all. This is the first one. This is, um, you know, honestly, it, it's really hard to to put this at number two. It could easily go at number one. Um, I'm just kind of noticing now the, the stars that are in the purple sky have this uh, reflective quality about them that I don't really think the other books kind of have that feature where it's, you know, kind of almost in an interactive with the light kind of way. But man, it's I mean, it's hard to put this at number two. Great book. Again, it's just kind of kind of like Goblet in a way or, um, where the, the scenes throughout the book are just kind of cut and copied and, and just kind of thrown onto the cover to give, you know, some eye candy to look at. Um, it's got the unicorn, got Fluffy tucked away. Um, even, you know, this, I remember this, this candle, you know, person, <clears throat> person holding the candle behind the curtain, always intriguing me. I'm assuming that is the Midnight Duel. I, I don't really know any other scene where that fits, but I remember always being curious about about that particular uh, description or that particular illustration drawing. If anybody has any idea, please let me know down below because it's like I said, it's always kind of captivated my attention in a way. There's Dumbledore on the background looking kind of shady with his cloak, or at least I think it's Dumbledore. I don't know who else it could possibly be. Yeah, Half Moon Spectacles, white beard and a um, purple cloak. So that's really this one and Half Blood Prince is really the, 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 the best you know, illustration of Dumbledore that we get other than the couple of times we see him throughout the book. Um, so that will do it for my second favorite Harry Potter cover art. And without further ado, of course, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, for whatever reason, however this made it to number one, I honestly couldn't tell you specifically. Um, I think it has a lot to do with Buckbeak. When I was a kid, um, I was just so drawn to Buckbeak, and I still am to this day. And honestly, you know, kind of hate the way that he just kind of fizzles out of the story, um, <clears throat> you know, after book three, where we only get. Uh, 
and it turns out that Creature uh, broke his leg to distract Sirius. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's Buck B. I mean, Wither Wings. You know? One eternity later. I'm pretty sure he's at the Battle of Hogwarts, too. But anyways, regardless, I just feel like if I had a hippogriff, yeah, I would use him more often than just have him sitting upstairs in my mom's bedroom. That was a long tangent. Um, <laughs> other than uh, Buckbeak on the front cover, I love the Dementors, you know, prowling the castle grounds. You have one, two, three, four of them on the back cover. You also have the Whomping Willow with a dog and a cat. And I think there's a rat somewhere on here. I might be mistaken. Oh yeah, and you got prongs on the inside cover as well. So I just love the, especially at the, yeah, there's, I was about to show this to you upside down. How silly would that have been? There is Peter Pettigrew. So it, <clears throat> it incorporates, you know, the, the book cover, it incorporates a lot of the, the fascination of this book. I know a lot of people have this book at number one. Um, I don't, it is not number one for me, but it is close up there. But because this cover art has all of these images, Dementors, the Marauders, Buckbeak, uh, Sirius, uh, Hermione, and Harry, you know, kind of on a rescue mission, that is why, for me, it is number one because of just kind of the surrounding um, chapter artwork that is kind of thrown in there, and it makes it, you know, really captivating to the eyes. Again, eye candy. For the eyes to uh to want to engage and want to you know get back to this book really you know potter mania in america back you know waiting for order of phoenix so in the meantime rereading all these books uh prisoner was my most you know reread book you know at that time when i was you know 10 11 12 years old it was my favorite book up until you know the latter books came out and then it just became a big you know up for debate on which one's the best book but it still holds, and it might be for nostalgia purposes, that Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite book cover uh, artwork. So there you have it, guys. That is uh, my book ranking of books one through seven book artwork uh, depicted by Miriam Grand Prix. She, again, she did a fascinating job on all of these books. This is just my personal opinion and my personal ranking on the books, which means that it is the most accurate you know, ranking out there on the internet, and now you guys have to, you know, have to adhere to my ranking to be your ranking. Of course, I'm just kidding. I would be very curious to hear your guys' ranking in the comment section down below. Let me know, you know, there's little tidbits of stuff that I was picking out. You know, let me know what you think, or did you already know about, like, say, the sword being a little different from the book work, uh, the book cover art from the chapter title art? Uh, who's that person holding the candle? Am I right in thinking that that's the Midnight Ghoul scene and that just doesn't really match or whatnot? But guys, let me know what you guys think. Have a great day. Thank you for clicking and be sure to stick around for more. See you around.